I'm going to go over how to create studio lighting setups to improve your renders. So I'll show you a few examples and I'll show you how the photographers do it and then I'll show you how to recreate that in Fusion or any other uh, CAD program or even in the studio if you wanted to take photographs of models. And using lighting will really help to bring out the shape and definition of the object and it will help it to stand out against the background. So here's one that I created of a Zara perfume. So you can see I've got a blue light from the right and then a purple light from the left. Now that helps to set the object apart from the background which has also got this blue purple tint to it and it gives it a sense of depth because you're trying to communicate a 3D object on a 2D screen or a printout. So what you need to do is use lighting to your advantage to help it stand out and pop off the screen. So that was that example. Um, another example I recreated the advert from the iPhone SE, the new advert. So I've used the lighting above and you can see it's created shadows here and it helps it to stand out against the red backdrop. Another one is a bottle, so I've used strip lights from the sides and a light behind the object to make it stand out and really accent the colours uh, within this bottle. Um, another one would be uh, this clock here. So you can see by using uh, strip lights on either side, I've got a nice soft highlight here and I've also got contrast in the legs to show that the cylindrical, now the highlight and the shadow helps to define the shape of the object and also the lights help to create this nice highlight here to show that this part of the object is actually reflective whereas this one's quite matte and you can, without the lighting you, you would be, it would, wouldn't stand out as much. Uh, another example um, I'll show you that one, is <clears throat> a photograph of a car, so a render of a car I've used two strip lights and a black background to create a sense of drama and emotion within the image. You know, to feel like it's just come out of the dark and it's quite a powerful thing that's like lurking there. So you can also use lighting to create emotion within images. So photographers have actually spent decades and decades perfecting the art of using light to um, emphasize things within objects. So if we look at some examples, so let's say you're going to render a, a bottle or something, a vodka bottle. You can see that behind the bottle, just like the image of the bottle that I rendered, you've got a light hitting a plate in the background. Now that's going to reflect and then shine through the vodka and create this nice soft glow and it also helps to brighten the bottle. And you can see by looking at the lid, they've got two strip lights either side creating this highlight on the lid to show that it's cylindrical and obviously they've added water droplets and stuff uh, to show that it's cold um, I think there's another one here um, I don't know the name of this character but any object placed in there you can see it'll be lit really well so you've got a nice this is called a key light this is the main light and this main light is creating a contrast between the top and the bottom of the object and the background is white, so that reflects any light from this key light and fills in those shadows. And these two um, pieces of card here, they help to reflect some of that light from the background and the key light and bounce it back into the object to fill in some of them shadows so that it's not as harsh. And, but you can see it by using uh, these lights either side you create a sense of depth within a, a spherical object that's communicated on a 2d plane like a screen and um, because you've got the shadow in the middle and then the two highlights either side so what we're going to do is we're going to recreate oh, fine. we're going to recreate this so this is a render of a f1 steering wheel that i've created so I created all of this infusion. I added the, de the decals and then the textured rubber here and then the uh, carbon fiber. Now, I've, as you can see from the shadows and the highlights here, that there was a light above here casting down upon the object, and I've got two. Um, I've got two fill um, plates, just like we showed on, on that um, other image. Here. 
to fill in some of the harsher shadows to create a softer image. So I recreated that here, and that's all it is. There's not much to it. Obviously, the background was white on the other one, but you can see without the lights. Make it bigger. It doesn't look too bad. It's I'd say it was a perfectly fine render. Nothing wrong with it. But by adding the lights and adding a ground plane as if it was resting on a table or something or a studio, you can see that these shadows and the highlights here just on the very top and the highlights on the dials here and here help to bring that object out and I think it does make the image or the render a lot better compared to the other one. So what we'll do is we'll um, let's see if I can find an object. Um, Actually, I'll start from the beginning actually with this. So if I turn these bodies off, I should have really named these bodies because I have no idea which ones. You can see how in some of the other tutorials, naming the bodies really helps because now I've got 54 bodies and I have no idea which what any of them are in this object. So I have to click on one and find that that's the right dial. Because you need to start naming them. I did, I done this. Uh, object a couple of years ago when I was just getting started so it's something that I've learned the hard way is to <laughs> start naming them so what we'll do is come in here change it to the environment okay so there's two ways you can create lighting setups in fusion the first way is to use a HDRI so what a HDRI is can't make these bigger but this all these here are 3d spheres that wrap around the object in the render environment and anything that's white is Im emitting light and anything that's black isn't emitting light uh, so you can see how by using like a, a soft light you can see how we we have got some reflections here but they're not really bright because it's quite soft so these are, these have not got hard edges whereas if we use something like the photo booth you can see that we've got a brighter main part of the image and the highlights and the shadows are a lot more contrasty so that makes the image pop a bit now if you were to render something in a more realistic environment you want you might want to use something like the a dry leg bed if it was a car or something but applying that to actually I think applying that to an object like this doesn't make much sense because this object is not necessarily photographed or seen in this kind of scenario although it is in a car and it does go outdoors it would only make sense to use a background like this in if it was a render as part of the car or something like that so if you're just photographing the object on its own, you might want to use just a tabletop surface with a studio environment because it doesn't make much sense. But you can see how the 3D wraparound HDRI here is creating the lighting on the object. So we'll just go back here and we'll just put on the photo booth. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go back to the design environment and then what we'll do is we'll create so we'll create on the bottom plane capture position a rectangle so we'll create that here and make it bigger so one thing to note is the bigger this is the more light it's going to emit but also the softer the light will be because if you can imagine the light coming from this size object this light is going to come here and from this side and also the top and any light that's emitted here will the shadows from this part will fill that in so you'll get nice soft shadows whereas if we were to create something that big the light can only come from this direction and also the middle so them shadows are going to be quite harsh compared to the other one because the 
the light can't wrap around and fill in them shadows. So this is heavily dependent on the ob the size of the object and how far this and how far away this is from the object and how bright it is. So it can get quite complicated, but the best thing you can do is just experiment. And there's no right or wrong way of doing it. So we'll just stick with that for now. Turn my sketches on. Now we're just going to extrude this. E, e for extrude. And I'll just call it one millimeter deep. So now if we go back into the render environment, we've just got this. So if we go into our appearance mode, and then just type in LED, go here and then drag and drop that on. That's that one there. So we just want to arrange the light so that it actually f is facing the object. So go here. Rename that key light, turn it off, that's that one. M for move on the keyboard. So what we want to do is we want to have it start at a 45 degree angle. It's 135 if we move it backwards. Um, so we'll just bring it to about there. So we've just got to imagine our heads that the light is coming down and casting there and then filling in them shadows and then the light will come down here. So we'll keep it about there for now. So now you can see we've got this in 3D space. So now if we turn on the ground plane, which will add a plate that it's, it's invisible but the shadows and light will be able to bounce off it, flatten the ground. And then we want to change the environment to a solid colour. We'll just make it black for now, just so we can see what, what's going on. Then if we look at from the top, you see by turning this off and on, turn that to zero, turn the brightness to zero. You can see, oh, why is that not doing that? Fusion. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, on. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Turn that back to 500. I have no idea. Anyway, Fusion sometimes just doesn't want to play. So, although it is darker at the minute because we've got the light set to a quite low value, you can see that by adding that light, we've created a nice highlight here just in the handles and then because there's not much light from anywhere else we've got a nice dark edge to it and we've also got nice highlights on the uh, dials and things like that and on the tops of the buttons which is might be what we want so I'll just turn that to like a nice grey then turn the brightness up now <coughs> in fusion Can't make that. Okay, so in fusion, light sources are measured in candelas. Now, what there is is one candle per meter squared. So if you have one one CD per meter squared, it's the equivalent light of having one candle in a meter squared environment. Now here we've got thirty, so one hundred and thirty thousand candles. Now, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. You've just got to guess. So maybe I'll put it up to. Uh, See what that does. Nothing. Why is this not working? Give it a minute. Oh, there we are. So you can see this is really bright. So now if we turn it down back to what it was, thirteen thousand. It's a little bit darker. Now that might be what we want. Uh, maybe turn it down a bit more. To 80,000. Now the rendering infusion is quite limited. I would I would recommend getting a program like Keyshot or something else to do the rendering. But 
for quick renders this is fine so you can see how while it's rendering at the minute we're getting these highlights are actually starting to become visible and the shadow is also becoming visible now this will only work if you click the player button now when you click play it's going to use something called ray tracing so if I just turn this off for now so you can see fusion's not so when something is ray traced the computer is calculating what direction and what intensity the light will be coming from here and what will happen to the light when it hits and then refracts off at the same angle so all ray tracing is is the computer's algorithms are tracking the beams of light that are hitting this object and it's quite CPU intensive so it will take a while and that's why it looks blurry in the beginning because the computer is working out what that light will do when it hits this object and it depends on the surfaces how bumpy they are, how reflective they are, how translucent they are so it, it will take a while but luckily it's there, so you can see as I just leave it for a minute it becomes more and more in focus and you can see um, the longer you leave it the better it will be now one benefit to using fusion is that you can do cloud rendering so what happens when you send you click render here is you send this to California Autodesk headquarters and they've got some really high end computers and they'll do all these calculations for you so you can set this to a maximum of 4000 pixels by 4000 pixels and then you can hit render and then go make a cup of tea and come back and your computer won't be the fans won't be spinning it'll just be idle which can save a lot of time and effort um, now with a student account you get 16 credits per render now you can see because this is quite a complex object with lots of different uh, decals and textures on it it is using the, up those credits but if I was I'm hoping that if I set it to a lower value yeah setting it to a lower value I'm using less credits now if I were you I would always set it to the highest one now obviously that's going to be square, but if you wanted it to be like 16 by 9, I think it would be 2,500. So then we're using about 10 credits, but just so you know, you've got a maximum of 16. Now, you rarely, you rarely go up to that maximum. Normally it's about 8 to 10 credits per render, as you can see here. So... Some of the renders that I've done in the past, uh, I've played with the light, I've tried different backgrounds, I've also tried different angles, um, of course this isn't working, fusion, um, <coughs> hopefully you can see in the thumbnail though, just by, you can send off a render with a, a lower intensity light and then a brighter one and you can just let them render in the background and carry on working, which can save a lot of time. This is not working. Um, so what you can also do is if we do the exact, follow the exact same process for this, but by adding these, and instead of making them reflective, uh, sorry, emissive, we're just going to make them reflective. So all you do for that, the best material would be plastic. Uh, so if you add the plastic, glossy, white or grey to these materials, all these are going to do is just reflect some of that light and bounce it back into the image to give it less harsh um, shadows, but you still retain the nice highlights. So that's one way of doing it. Um, and also, as a side note, if you end up having something like this, um, and you haven't... See, I've used all of these materials in here, because it's quite complex, but if you've used some of them, like ABS, like if we drag ABS up and it's not actually in here, you can right click and delete all the news and anything that isn't in the model will be removed from here. So that will help when you've got a lot of materials in your models. So that's one way of recreating light in Fusion. If we go back to Google, um, let's say you wanted to light these shoes and you were unsure how to do it, you would type in shoe photography uh, lighting setup or you know something like that but 
a good way of estimating how to light something is just to search for that product and then try and replicate where these lights are and the shape and the size of them relative to the object. So you can see that there's absolutely hundreds to choose from, so that would be a good one for a bottle. Um, that would be a good one just, you know, uh, using plants or a stool or something. Um, but this is the most used one, so these are called strip lights. So there's no key light here. <coughs> the key lights are the strip lights. So all you need to do is create a plane, just like we did here, but turn it on its side here, and then mirror that on the other side. And what that does is creates a nice highlight on the sides, and then creates a nice um, dark part of the front of the image, as you can see here. This is reflective strip lighting, but you can see how this could be a strip light infusion here and here. And then you've got these black card, or white card on the other side to add in a bit more brightness to the very front of the label. But you can see how the light is creating these darker parts of the bottle here, and then the white rim highlights on the bottle. Or the same here, it's the same as the strip light, you've just but the circular. Um, but all you have to do is just find something that you want to photograph, search for it, and then replicate this lighting setup in Fusion. But I would always add one light at a time, and then send a render off to see what it looks like, and then if you're happy with it, add the next light. Because otherwise, if you have three or four lights, it's going to get confusing as to what light is doing what in the image. So I uh, hope that helps.